Hey there, before you uh, put this video to two times speed, um, uh, I will just say a very important announcement is about to play. If you like my videos, like these Beatles videos, you want to see more content like this, um, I, a very important announcement I'm going to play here. Basically, uh, my channel is going to split into multiple channels. It's all my content uh, is not going to be on one channel anymore. It's going to split into multiple channels. So if you want to see the full update on that, uh, to understand everything, um, the announcement. I'm going to play this announcement right here. But if you've already seen this announcement in one of my other video, in my other video on this, on this, or you just don't care and you're just here to watch just this video and you're not going to watch any of the rest of my videos, uh, skip to this timestamp. But if you do care, uh, here's the update on everything going on with my channels. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hello, and today I'm going to give you a rundown of major changes that are happening to my channel, or channels, I should say. So basically, I'm going to be splitting my channel into multiple channels um, of their own categories of what my channel revolves around. I just said channel a lot, but hope you understand what I'm saying. So the reason I'm doing this is because how the YouTube algorithm works is it says if a viewer on average watches every video you upload, your videos are better, so it shows them to more people. But the problem with my channel is that I react and do so many different content about so many different things that people, most people aren't interested in everything I react to. So some most people just watch one topic that I react to. So, you know, they just watch my Beatles reactions or they just watch my NBA videos or they just watch my TV show Breaking Bad or Chris Chan reactions. So basically I'm going to be spreading my uh, content into multiple different channels so that people who like that content are going to watch more a higher percentage of each uh, video on those channels so YouTube will promote it more to help promote my channel to help promote all my videos uh, in general more so here's the rundown um, here so this channel Lyric Reacts will exclusively be for reactions that don't fit my other reaction channels so basically this is for my channel for reacting to whatever the hell I want. This channel will stay as reacting to whatever the hell I want as the original channel. So um, that's basically what the channel will be. Whatever the hell I want um, is going to be reacting. And all these reaction channels will have daily uploads. So next we have the Lyric Reacts NBA channel. This channel will be for daily NBA reactions. So if you want my NBA reactions, go subscribe to that channel. Um, I will be continuing to upload all my videos to this channel for the next around two weeks and putting this disclaimer at the beginning of each video so you, people understand before I just start uploading to a channel that no one subscribed to. Um, but eventually, subscribe to that channel so eventually I will start only uploading my NBA reactions to Lyric Reacts NBA. I'll have daily NBA reactions as well uh, as weekly NBA full game reactions. So we're going to react to a bunch of classic NBA games on that channel. And next we have Lyric Reacts Music. So if you watch my Beatles reactions mainly, as the music reactions I've done so far, start with this, go to this channel. We'll be doing um, reacting to uh, the Beatles solo albums as well as we're eventually going to get to a bunch of classic albums. I plan to do a all bunch of classic albums in chronological order. And I'm also going to start my hip hop journey where I'm going to react to um, hip hop albums in chronological order, the history of hip hop. So uh, I plan to do one non hip hop album and one hip hop album per week. And it will be all, I'm going to plan to react to both in chronological order, so I think it would be a really cool experiment to do. There will also be daily song reactions from those albums, so hopefully you will enjoy that. So if you like my music reactions here, you want to see more music reactions, go to that channel, Lyric Reacts Music. Next we have Lyric Reacts Media. This channel will be exclusively for TV and movie reactions. So right now I am reacting to three shows, quote-unquote, um, those being Breaking Bad, Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History, and Attack on Titan. I'm counting the Chris Chan series, even though it's a YouTube series as a show, because it is a series. Um, so... Um, if you like to react to any of those, my Breaking Bad reactions, my Chris Chan reactions, or my Attack on Titan reactions, go to that channel. That's where those reactions are going to move to. And there is, I am planning on uploading two react, two reactions of two episodes of each of those per week, as well as one movie reaction. I am actually counting the Beatles Get Back documentary as a movie, just because the episodes are so long. So if you want to watch the Beatles Get Back documentary, my reaction to that, also subscribe to that channel. Um... And also, yeah, weekly movie reactions, as well as two episodes of three shows per week. 
And that's it for my reaction channels, but I also have two other channels. First of all is Lyric Rumbles MBA. I have already started uploading on this channel months ago, so I already have some original content up there, but the quality is going to improve a lot. It is for my original MBA content. So if you like my MBA content, if you want to see original MBA content, go to that channel, Lyric Rumbles MBA. I plan to upload one video there over one every one to two weeks because you know, obviously that takes a lot more editing and work than the reaction videos. And then I have a new channel called Lyric Rumbles, just Lyric Rumbles. That channel is the original content that is not NBA related. So you subscribe to that channel to get my original content that is not going to be NBA related. Um, it's going to be the channel I'm probably going to work the hardest on um, in general. Um, and it's not going to, you're not going to see a video on there for a little bit because uh, it's, uh, it's going to take a lot of work for those videos. And my first video I plan on playing there is the Beatles Iceberg Explained, which is a video I'm really hyped for making, but it's going to take a little bit. So subscribe to that channel preemptively to get all those uh, videos. And yeah, so basically that's the gist. Um, the, my six channels, Lyric Reacts, Lyric Reacts MBA, Lyric Reacts Music, Lyric Reacts Media, Lyric, Reac Lyric Rumbles, MBA and Lyric Rumbles. So subscribe to all six of those channels um, if you like all of it. If you like all my content, go subscribe to all six channels, but if you're interested in certain parts of my content that you only watch, subscribe to the ones that fit you the most. Um, and yeah, sorry for this long um, explanation, but I had to get the word out so you know which where the, my content is going to go now. And so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy the content coming up. Hi, my name is Lyric, and the day has finally come. April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2023, I started my Beatles journey reacting to documentary looking at all the stuff and um we've reacted to every single Beatles album full Beatles album up until this point it's been over a year and I should not have taken this long at all should not have came even close to taking this long but some hiccups came along the way and we're here we are finally at the last Beatles album we are going to react to, which is Abbey Road. We have done them in the order that you have stated. We've done all the past masters. We've done Let It Be before this one. And now we're on to Abbey Road, the finale of the Beatles discography. Their most popular album, the most streamed album, and uh, according to some people, their best album, and it's their last recorded album, and it's going to be the finale to this series, and I came prepared. Don't act like I didn't come prepared. I came prepared. Look at the shirt. We got the Beatles Abbey Road shirt on deck. And look what we got here. We got the Beatles magazine right here. Um, uh, back in the early days, you know. And also some of the stuff in the late days on it. But, you know reminiscing back in the early days I kinda got a Beatles haircut I don't know 
Um, and we have the album cover right here. This is one of the most we're going to album cover reviews. This is potentially the most iconic album cover of all time up there with The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd and such um, of the four guys, four boys walking across the street, Abbey Road, I presume. Um, yeah, super iconic album cover. Um, I'm sure people who live next to this road are super annoyed by people always trying to recreate this photo all the time, just stopping traffic and shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, we're gonna get into it. The final Beatles album, and... Yeah, so hope you guys enjoy this video, um, let's get into it, so, let's start off. So, starting off, let's look at the synopsis it has here on Genius, it says, named after the, the, on, ne, the, Named, uh, named after the road on which they did most of their recordings, Abbey Road was the Beatles' final album along with two of George Harrison's finest songs. The highlight is the medley, which takes the majority of the second side, so don't, don't. If you need to go across the comments right now, I am aware of what the medley is and how it's going to work. So, uh, I think the final eight songs on the album, starting with uh, You Never Give Me Your Money, are all technically like one big song. Just made up of eight smaller songs that we're gonna listen to back to back. Obviously, we're gonna pause uh, to give commentary, but I do know that it's one continuous song, so I'm not gonna be stopping and giving my full thoughts as much as I am between all these songs that are actual just songs that within themselves. Um, so yeah, the, the album has been featured on several best of lists, including number 14 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. It was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1995. And also, I recently see Apple Music came out with their top 100 albums of all time. This was ranked the third greatest album of all time by them so let's get into it man Abbey Road 1969 by the Beatles I'm so hyped I've never this is my potential this got to be my biggest video ever um, so hyped, uh, don't leave by the way after this video, I have more videos to come, if you like classic rock albums, we're gonna rest you a lot more, but we're gonna get into it, um, Beatles Solo Scarfy, we're gonna get you after that, but, yeah, so let's, let's start off, Abbey Road by the Beatles, 47 minute long album, 17 songs, of course the last 8 songs are shorter because they're all part of like the same um, medley. But let's get into this. Track number 1 is Come Together. And this one is written by Lennon. Um, 
so let's get into this, man. <sighs> so hype, man. I'm ready. Track number one, Come Together. The bass is nuts. Paul McCartney, oh my god. Shoot me. Accidentally produces faith there, John Lennon starting off the track with shoot me. Whatever. Okay, let's see. Okay. John Lennon always has these lyrics where I have no idea what he's talking about, but it sounds really good. Okay. You <laughs> got all flat top green up slowly. Uh, it's a borrowed line for Chuck Berry. Okay. Um. Very nice. Chuck Berry has this meme where he has this producer tag that the song is a every every one of Chuck Berry's songs starts the exact same, which I think is funny. Um say <laughs> word uh So yeah, so great song. The bass is fucking nuts on this, and the production sounds really good. I really like the evolution of the Beatles production, like the quality of the sound, like the sound quality got so much better over the years, which I really like, so... Um... Yeah, the instrumental on this sounds fucking nuts. I even know I, I don't really know what he's talking about it so far. Shoot me, could be a reference to heroin. Nice. Double drug reference there, shooting Coca-Cola, obviously. <laughs> I mean, only, that's not that hard, not more hard of understanding of a drug reference there, shooting Coca-Cola. Great chorus, man, because of the the bass is so hard on this track, dude. The bass is so hard, it makes the chorus so good, dude. Oh my god. Like, the bass really goes hard at this fucking chorus. God dang. Of course we get another fucking walrus reference in this track, god damn it. Every album. Gotta have a walrus reference. Oh, the instrumental. It's the, 
Instrumental is making this track. God damn, it's so good. Production is so hard. This real head bumper, just uh, just a boom, 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 and, uh, the bass and, and the drums too. God damn. Dude, oh my god. The guitar is really mm. The bass is so good that as soon as literally any other instrument comes in it makes it just sound so much better. Alright, so that was track number one, Come Together. Um, yeah, it sounded like a fantastic song. The, uh, the instrumental, I think, really made the song. And uh, John, I don't, okay, the problem is, I don't know what the hell John Lennon was talking about in the song. Which is a issue for me. But the instrumental was so good that it made me really bump my head the whole time, time. You know, I had really no idea what he was talking about. Um, but yeah, really great opening to the track. I want to go deeper into know what Lennon was help, what the hell he was talking about, but uh. Um, I know it's Lena, there's probably some deeper meaning in it, but, um, yeah, fantastic track one, um, I think Paul McCartney really carried that song with the bass, personally, um, yeah, uh, you know what, we're gonna do one more listen, because you know what this is the biggest reaction on my channel so far probably let's go come together let's just do another listen to come together again we're in a back real quick we're in a back <laughs> the opening is so good It's actually so surreal that I'm actually listening to the album right now. This has been so hard for so long, and I had such a big hiatus between this and the last album. But, uh, yeah, so I saw something on Genius. It does say the, the theory that maybe there's four verses, and that each verse is like about each one of the Beatles. But I don't see really the connections there. Uh, I'd have to go deeper into it. But uh, yeah, great song at the bat. It was super head bumpy. Yeah. Super head bumpy. Amazing track there. And it's actually a longer Beatles song, which I like. Because a lot of the Beatles songs I think are too short. 
I think a lot of the Beatles songs are way too short. Like, you get to the good part and then it's just, it's just over. Like, Beatles were really good at making those two to three minute songs, but you know, I like having a like, longer song that gives more time to flesh out, you know? And you get the bump for it for longer, you know? So now we're on to uh, track number two, which is called Something. And it's by our main man, the man, the myth, the legend. I miss you, big guy, George Harrison. Now, I'm liking George. I think his songs have got progressively better over time. Um, Let It Be uh, I was the last album reaction I did. Uh, actually, you know, I think Past Masters did that last re re reaction I did, but the action, but um, on Let It Be, I have changed my mind now what my favorite song on the album is. I now think I, Me, Mine is my favorite song of that album. Uh, fantastic song by George. Uh, I'm really liking his song, so let's see how he steps it up in this, um, in this album with something. Yeah, let's see how it goes, man. Um... I'm so hyped, bro. Like, my blood pressure is okay. So, let's just. Let's go. Track number two, something. After my dog stopped barking. Okay, let's go. Metals, man. Oh my god. The instrumentals are going so crazy. Honestly. Like, okay, the instrumental on this one was fantastic. We're starting the instrumental off on this one like that. Yeah, the Beatles have stepped with their instrumental game. I don't know if it's because the production has gotten better, it just sounds better, um, or what, bro, because, but it's the instrumental game has made a whole new leap in this album. God dang. Paul McCartney is going nuts with this bass, dude. And Ringo's going crazy with the drums in both tracks. They have stepped up their game. John and George have written the song so far. And um, Paul and... Ringo are going crazy with the production starting off this album. God dang. Those drum, that drum part of the beginning is crazy. George's voice sounds so soft over this. The mixing is really good, how his voice fits the instrumental here. 
A lot of the early Beatles songs, I feel like, a lot, maybe in the psychedelic era, there was some songs that, like, the instrumental was way too loud compared to his voice. I could barely hear what he sang. This, I love the mixing on this. His voice is so smooth in the mix. And, uh... It's so smooth listening to it. Like, it's such a smooth voice. I love George's voice. And here with the amazing instrumental, this is fantastic. This guitar is going nuts. Okay, literally every instrument is going so nuts, including George's voice. Oh my god, this is fantastic. Dude, listen to this chorus, dude. This chorus is fantastic. Oh my god. I feel like I'm being a. I feel like I'm a. I've ascended. The song. Oh my God. You're. Yeah. I can see how this is a higher ranked album. Just two tracks in. God dang. Something in the way she woos me. Dude, the instrumental, it like pops out his voice so much. Like, it makes his voice seem so important. And like, the way he's saying matters. Uh, like, this is a really beautiful love song right here. Like, you ever like see something and it's like amazes you so much that you like you don't even recognize this is like a real thing that's happening to you. Oh my god, I'm being ascended. Dude, what am I listening to? This is fan <laughs> so good. Dude, the part where the instrumental switches up after this, the chorus is so good, so catchy, and it's just so, so smooth and beautiful. And then the instrumental switch up, and then his voice when he says, You're asking me will my love grow? Then fantastic with the instrumental switch up getting more bigger and oh my god oh guitar solo There's any song needed the guitar solo, it's definitely this, because the guitar, this whole track has been amazing, adding on to it. And I love that interlude there, but getting bigger. Uh, you know, 
more him yell, more, you know, louder vocals compared with his more smooth, gentle, and then it goes to that. Oh my god, this is fantastic. The drums in this part. Drums in this is it. Ringo is MVP of the album, dude. I swear. I love guitar solos, man. I love this chorus part, man. song was so good the instrumental was great the drums the bass the guitar the build up the bridge the chorus the lyrics the verses the voice the vocals Oh my god, the guitar solo. Dude, oh my god, what have I just heard? I feel like I just saw Jesus Christ return to the earth and I'm in shock, dude. <laughs> dude. Oh my god, we are replaying the fuck out of this. This is the best, was one of the best Beatles songs I've ever heard on Palm First Listen. Oh my god, dude. What a song. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I know my complain when there's like too many love songs. That was a fantastic love song. One of the most fantastic love songs I've ever heard. Um, I saw the... Uh, um... And the genius notation said, Frank Sinatra called this the best Lennon McCartney love song, but then learned that it wasn't Lennon McCartney Terrison that wrote this, which really shows his development as a, a smart thing. Uh, it really shows his development as a songwriter. Um that people were like, wow, this is the best Lennon McCartney love song, and it's not even by them. But yeah, we gotta replay the thing. Replay it! Oh my god, dude. That beginning, dude. The 
beginning of both songs has been so good. Yeah, ten out of ten song. Fantastic song. This has been a amazing start to the album. Definitely two for two with these songs. Wow. All right, let's get to track number three, which is uh, God dang, Maxwell Silver Hammer. Uh, lead vocals we got from McCartney. So we got all three of the main songwriters starting off here. We got a Lennon song, a Harrison song, and now a McCartney song. So I'm very hyped about that. Um, so, yeah, th uh, thank you, genius. I really need to know who the Beatles are. Okay. <laughs> So let's go. Uh, track number three is a Maxwell's Silver Hammer. That's a classic McCartney start. So uh, I like the. Uh, yeah, these two had amazing instrumentals. It started off with these amazing instrumental openings. Paul just gets right into it. He's like, hey, these are immediately start off with the vocals. And also, it's, it's like, immediately you can get the Paul McCartney style of it. It just goes, duh, duh. It's a, bit, a lot more upbeat, you know. Um, so yeah, let's get in there. Joan was quizzical, studied metaphysical science and X-Well Silver Hammer made sure that she was dead. Um, <laughs> is this a song about murdering people? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what this con this is very much imply here. Uh, <laughs> she goes ready to go in or a knock is at to the door. He's, I like how he's singing about this. It's so up. Beat. <laughs> For some that's very clearly not an upbeat topic, he's literally talking about this girl getting murdered. Bang, bang, Maxwell Silver Hammer. Literally made sure she was dead. And I love this genius annotation right here. <laughs> of course. It's amazingly one contributor unreviewed genius annotation that says Maxwell, for the lack of a better term, f it will all caps fucking kills Joanne. Very nice. Okay. We got a nice. You know, every artist has to have their serial killer song a song about murdering people it's it's necessary every artist has a, at least one song about killing people i'm convinced um <laughs> oh look right down in the comments below your oh, some of your artists your favorite artist songs about killing people because I'm sure everyone has one. Come on now. Comes on the door. Ooh, a 
Let's see. 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 I, that sounds like a synth. I don't know if it is, but we never heard a synth on the Beatles song before. She was dead. What was that? Oh my god. It was really different for Beatles song. He just laugh. Oh, we could just laugh in the middle of the line. Hold up. She tells Max to stay when the glass has gone away. So he waits behind. Writing 50 times. He just laughs in the middle. Bruce laughed in the middle of a line on the song, nice. Uh -oh, uh -oh. But when she turns the back on the ball, bang, bang, swell, sail, her hands came down. Silver hammer, is the silver hammer like a knife? Or a gun. I don't know. He, uh, he has killed his teacher for making him stay after class to write to write some 50 times. Dude. <laughs> How old is this guy, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> I... The guitar has been so good this whole album. Guitar has been... Who is the guitarist in this? Is it George Harrison doing the main guitar part? If so, most improved guitar has been so good on this album. Kill the judge? What? He is the as the words were leaving is this guy is dude, how this this guy has killed the judge while he was <laughs> while she was sentencing while he was uh while the judge was sentencing him? Dude, I gotta respect it, honestly. If you're gonna go to jail anyway, you might as well. <laughs> Shouldn't say that, but yeah. A lot of different sounds on this one. Yeah, okay, so that was definitely the worst track of the three so far, but the, all three tracks have been great. Because that was, I, I really like that song. <laughs> I just love the concept. Just, let me just have a song about this guy who just goes around murdering people. But he, it's like, it, not in a gruesome, like, M and M type way, you know. It's like a, it's more of a fun, lighthearted, somehow lighthearted way of being. Like, yeah, this guy just 
be killing people. He just killed the judge as she was sentencing him. I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a creative creative uh, topic for a song, I gotta say, definitely. Definitely a creative topic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, great. Uh, di really different instrument. Really different instruments using it. Uh, it said that that was like the first Beatles song to ever use a synth, uh, which I'm pretty sure would have to be like a new invention during this time because I'm pretty sure people weren't using synths that much definitely during this time it had to be a new invention so that was pretty cool to use that um yeah I liked I liked the irony of it being up hard to be with the talk about literally murdering people so yeah so now we're on to track number four which is uh, Oh Darling, which is another song by McCartney. We got back-to-back -back McCartney songs here. So yeah, Oh Darling, track number four. All these songs in this album, other than Maxwell Silverhammer, have really heavy beats. Like the like the as soon as the beat comes on, it like smacks you in the face with like the boom, you know, like it really heavy beats. Like I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it, but yeah. Like, it's not like, you're not like jigging along like this, you're like, like, you know, I don't know, if, I, I don't know how to describe that, but hopefully you'll understand the feeling I'm going for here. It's like, I don't know if it's just the bass doing that, or like what. The vocal mixing is so much better on this album. I really love the vocal mixing on the album. Like, it fits so well with the instrumentals. Like, there's nothing, like, you can hear the vocals so well, which I really like. And you'll also hear the instrumentals so well. Like, none, they're not overpowering one another at all. I really like it. Classic Beatles stop. Um, they did that in a lot of songs, like early on, uh, where they have like the stop and then it goes dumps down into it, which I really like. It gets you super hyped when it comes back on. Let's work for the chorus here. I really, I really like that. If you leave me. Make it alone. Alone, I can tell that.
he's doing all types of He's doing all types of vocal ranges here. He did the alone and then did the super high note. I like that. Trump hurt. So crazy the whole out. Ringo's going nuts. Oh. I love the aggressiveness on that, dude. Oh my god, we had a super white. You know, like, da, 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 you know, kind of McCartney song, and then so aggressive on that. I like that. I really like the, the hard rock right there. I really like that part, how the instrument like builds you up and it gets you all hyped and then it drops down. Really like that beat drop, listen to this. Guitar's going up too. I love how heavy this song is. We went such a light song to such a heavy song. Very nice. Love the contrast. different at the end yeah okay so two of the songs here have been like more simple more love songs but they both done them so well I love how hard this song went uh, with the McCartney vocals and the instrumental, both were so hard, but so heavy. I really liked that, um, how heavy it went, uh, especially from the contrast from Michael Silverhammer and something which is more of a, you know, laid back kind of song. And come to, yeah, this is the first like, really heavy song in the album. I really liked it. Um, yeah, the instrumentals have been so great. Uh, the instrumentals have been the most improved, best part of this album, I think, so far. But yeah, great songs. Yeah, dude, verse 4 for 4, 100%. Great songs, dude. Fantastic songs. So now we're on track number five, which is Octopus's Garden. And oh my goodness, guys. We have a song written by the man of the legend, Richard Starkey. 
aka Ringo Starr. This is his second ever written song, his last written Beatles song. Um, the other one was Don't Pass Me By, which a lot of people actually don't like on that album, but I actually, I, 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 I like the song. So let's see if we can get some improvement here off the Ringo, uh, R Ringo written song. So we have every other song written so far. So, uh, now let's go. Octopus's Garden, o odd title for a song. Let's go. Dude, the instrumental, man, it's been so much more clear, so much more clean. It's been so good, dude. The production has stand up on this album, dude. Oh my god. I'm more upbeat this one. I'd like to be. Love hearing Ringo's voice again, man. The sea, in an octopus's garden, in the shade. In an octopus's garden, in the shade. I really like how upbeat the song is. Ringo's always got this voice, man. It just makes you so happy. It makes you smile every time you hear his fucking voice. Um, and fantastic. Uh, yeah, the it's the instrumental is so upbeat. I really like it. It's a really head bopper. This one. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, though. He's talking about he wants to be in an octopus's garden. Uh, yeah, it's like a fantasy world, I guess. You want to go to off to a fantasy world. Maybe it has deeper meaning, like, oh, he's not happy in life. He wants to go off to a fantasy world, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a song is Bob. Still I'd go. like to be Bang your lyrics for Ringo for Ray In an octopus's garden In the shade On the sea bed In an octopus's garden It's hard when the song that's so loud I like this switch up from Oh Darl Max Silverhammer to Oh Darling to Octopus Garden. It's a real giving you kind of whiplash, but in a good way. I like in the differences between them, uh, how you know, heavy and not heavy the songs are going. <laughs> Guitar's all though. Guitar's going hard, dude. Oh my god. This is a happy guitar song, though. Shout and swim about. 
the car I love the ad libs that the Such a happy song, man. I like this. That was a fantastic upbeat uh, song. A really nice switch up for Mo Darling. A really nice break from the harder vocals. Yeah, fantastic. I really like that song. Um, Ringo always brings some amazing charm. I thought that was really good. Really good job on his second written song. They only write two Beatles songs. And I think that one was really good and it fit on par with all these other songs that were written by, you know, the other Beatles in their prime, you know, uh, writing these fantastic songs that all cohere together. Yeah, it's just amazing. So... Fantastic work from Ringo there. Fantastic work from him. Alright, so now we're on to track number six. We're already at the end of side one. I can't believe I can't believe it. I can't believe we're already at the end of side one. Everything is going by so quickly. So we're at the end of side one, which is I want you and parentheses, She's So Heavy, written by Lennon. This song is nearly eight minutes long. This might be the longest Beatles song ever. I will actually think Revolution 9 might be longer, but like, come on now, it's Revolution 9. So, uh... Yeah, this is, I think, the heaviest, uh, the, the longest, sorry, Beatles song, like, act that's actually a song, well, I, I assume it's a song, um, that, we're, that we've ever seen, so I'm very curious to see what this is, uh, Yeah, let's see what this is. Uh, the I want you see so heavy. Track number six. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, I see what's called she's so heavy. The instrumental is fucking heavy. Yeah. Tons of more heavy instrumentals on this. Obviously, we've had our more gentle tracks like Octopus Garden, Michael Silver Hammer, and even something. Um, but Come Together, Oh Darling. Well, something has some very heavy elements in it sometimes. But, but especially Come Together, Oh Darling, in just a few seconds of this, we can already see a uh, lot more heavy tracks, which I really like. I really like the more heavier Beatles songs. We have so, we have so much lighter Beatles songs. I really like when they go heavier with this. They've gone full in with this album. I really like that. <laughs> The bass, dude. Paul McCartney. I don't. This guy was. Had to be. Dude. This guy is going dumbo mode with the bass. He's going. 
He's going base on that, dude. This guy is going insane with the bass, this whole album. Dude, oh my god, do you hear this bass? is going so nuts yeah he's in the, yeah the lyrics do they go along with the simple lyrics but the heavy instrumental bro it's really a good combo just to dance with like a bop your head to I guess not really dance but yeah <laughs> Bass, dude. I can't get over this fucking bass. He says she's so, he's a t she's so heavy. He says she's so, and then the fucking heavy part of the song plays. I love that transition to that part of the instrumental. I love that. Yeah, this is like the first Beatles album where I really think the instrumental is the best part of the album. It's like the every other album, I think the vocals and the lyrics have been my favorite part of the album. This is like the first album where I, th I truly think the instrumental has been my favorite part. Like, the instruments have been so crazy, dude. Like, the bass especially. The bass has been going nuts this whole album. Oh my god. Love that part, dude. Bring it to this heavy smell. The bass is faster a bit now. This part is so groovy, and that, that part is so heavy. Oh, 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 we heard uh, uh, McCartney's heavy vocals. Now we're in some real John heavy vocals. I love this. Oh my god. It's getting more intense and more heavy as the song goes on. I really like the build up here. It's gonna be a, it's a long build up, but it's really worth it. It's really good to build up. I like it. But the, the groovy parts in the middle. Oh, 
that part so good, dude. Every time. more intense as it goes on, oh my god. I like this as an ending to the first side too, because it just kept getting more as a uh, ending the song with such an intense song before you go into the second half. It's just, I really like it. <laughs> It feels like we're building up to something so intense, dude. It's like, oh, I feel like I want to punch something, dude. It keeps building me up, bro. It's like, ah. He's gonna build up for another two minutes, dude. Oh my god. All oh, the drums. <laughs> That same guitar is going to like, get more intense all the instruments around it, dude. Oh my god. The drums are getting louder, more intense. What other instrument coming in? I don't know what this is. Oh, a TV static. It makes it so much more chaotic. I love this outro. I love this long ass outro of just the instrumental. This is so good. Because the, the Beatles songs are so lyric heavy. I love having this big ass outro of just getting more and more and more intense, intense heavy, heavier instrumental, more chaotic, more instruments, instruments getting heavier. This is so good. Thing that goes to the like 
building up. So much noise. So much well, white noise and everything. And then... And then it just cuts off. And then it goes into this gentle song next. Fan. Fantastic track. I actually loved that track. That was so that was the most creative Beatles song I've ever seen in my I've ever seen so far. Cause that was the most different Beatles song because they it just it started off as a as a more chill, you know. And uh, a bunch so bad, you know. I love that it was so groovy and stuff. It just kept that instrumental part where the uh, where he goes, she's so, and then he just kept getting more and more intense at the end. It was just a long instrumental break. It was getting more intense and more intense and more intense, and. More intense and, more intense and the white noise coming in and the drums getting heavier and but the guitar is still going I love that fantastic ending to the first side I love that song that might be that and something are my favorite songs of the first side so far so yeah so that's side one side one Six for six, fantastic side. Uh, dude, I have nothing bad to say about this. I'm normally one overly critical motherfucker. Um, but not this. This is fantastic. Come Together was great. Something was 10 out of 10. Maxwell Silverham was good. Oh, darling, great. Octopus Garden, nah, I want you, she's so heavy, was a fantastic ending song to that first side. So, yeah, the first side has set fantastic expectations for this album. Uh, now, okay, we're going on to side two now. So, side two, I think, have historically been worse for the Beatles. Typically, the side two is not as good as side one, apart from sometimes, other than maybe they put the best track on side two, but then the rest are not as good as side one. But we'll see if that, if this is gonna happen here. I don't know, cause there's definitely the case with the White Album, definitely the case with the White Album. Um, I think mostly Sgt. Pepper's, obviously, other than A Day in the Life. Um, and I think, the, yeah. So let's see. And I think for Sim for Revolver, other than Tomorrow Never Knows. Um, but Revolver, is, I think, has gotten even better since I, when I first heard it. Um, but yeah, let's get into Abbey Road Side 2. <sighs> I'm ready. All right, so now we are on to beginning of side two, track number seven, which is Here Comes the Sun, lead vocals from George Harrison. Now, I know that this album, this song is... My dog won't shut the hell up. Um, but I know that this song is the most dream song, um, of the Beatles' entire discography. So I, I, it's by George Harrison, which is insane that it's not John or 
poll that has the most streamed song uh, by the Beatles. It's George Harrison. So, I'm very excited to see what the fuck this could possibly be if it's the most streamed song in their entire discography. And I, I can hear the beginning, it's a lot more peaceful song compared to this one. Um, which I really like to switch up there for side one, you end up with the big chaotic mess and then starting off and then starting off this one more peaceful so yeah let's get into it here comes the sun my dog should have the perfect time let's go so peaceful man i love this <laughs> I love this instrumental, man. Oh my god. George has the best voice in the Beatles. Don't fight me. His voice is so good. It's so smooth by this point. With the mixing being so good at this point, his production, his voice is so smooth over every instrumental and the instrumental is so smooth what is it like a sitar i don't know the sitar some it's so smooth i love this instrumental uh it's so chill and feels so good and his voice is so smooth i love this I could definitely see how this is the most stream Beatles song because it's so chill. This is such a chill song. Like, so chill. You can just groove along to it so well. Yeah, fantastic. I really love this. This is such a chill song, and George's voice is so smooth. I could definitely see how this would be the most strange song because you can play this anywhere, dude. It's just so chill. Like, just, yeah. I love the layering of the vocals. The vocaling is so good and the instrumental, oh my god. Yeah, well, this is the best by far. We're already seven tracks in. I'm laying down the foot. By far the best Beatles instrumental track. Instrumental album. Um, instrumentals are even so good. This is... Listen to this instrumental, it's so good. Oh my god, this instrumental is good. <laughs> it's not as bombastic as In Your Face, the other ones, but it's just so chill and so good. I really love it, and Joe's vocal, and the, the layering on his vocals when he says things is so good, and his voice is so smooth. 100%, yeah, this is fantastic. This is so good, god damn. Yeah, 
Here comes the sun mean better times are coming. I like that. Nice optimistic song. Really good message and stuff. the MVPs of this album in terms of the instrumental and George has been damn near the MVP with the damn the songs that he's written bro like goddamn listen something oh my god <laughs> Such a great song, just smooth. Just such a. This is Yeah. I have no words for this song, it's just so good. Ten out of ten song. Ten out of ten. But dude. George has had the two best songs in the album so far, dude. George is the MVP of the album. Something and Here Comes the Sun. Are you joking, dude? Are you joking? This guy is nuts. This guy is... This guy is nuts. These are two such, such, such... Such good songs. Oh my god. Such good songs. That was so do I love the guitar the I love the guitar or whatever the fuck the instrumental was. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Dude, fantastic instrumental. Dude, so good. So catchy. Such great vocal layering. Smooth vocal. Such a chill song. Such a relaxing song. It just makes you feel happy. You know, it's an optimistic song. You know, here comes better times, you know. Yeah, that's another 10 out of 10 song. We've had at least two 10 out of 10 songs, and they've both been from George. It's been amazing. I love I Want You, She's So Happy as well, and Come Together. Yeah, this has been fantastic. This has just been so great. This has been so great. I'm so glad that we are finally ready to hear. <laughs> and we got to finally get this amazing experience. I really feel like this is an amazing experience in my fucking life. It really feels like listening to this damn album. Yeah, it's just so good. So now we're on... Um, track number 10, no, track number 8, which is, uh, Because, and this is lead vocals from Lennon, McCartney, and Harrison. Wow, so we're gonna get some harmonies, I'm assuming, here, from all three. Or maybe each one gives a verse or something, I don't know. But let's go track number eight because I don't know how we uh, no you no know actually no, let's just before we do that, let's re listen to Here Comes the Sun again. Just cause I want to. Let's go. Here comes the sun again. Let's go.
That song is so beautiful, man. Such a beautiful song. Oh my god. Well, anyway, let's go on to Because. Let's see what's going on. Ooh. Dude, the instrumental. This is a synth. This whole synth part right here. We had a little bit of synth earlier. With like uh, Maxwell Silver Hammer and stuff. And I think maybe in a. I Want You She's So Heavy. But I like the. This is a whole synth part right here. I got the instrumental. Yeah. So different. The instrumentals have just been. The best part of this album. Oh my god. Oh my god. The harmonies are insane. Do we even heard harmonies like this ever in the Beatles with all of them doing it? God dang. Oh my god. It's so evangelical, dude. Oh my god. Such variety on this album, such heavy songs, such chill songs. And this is like it. It's yeah. Once again, the song feels like you're ascending once again with all the amazing harmonies and stuff. more of a hippie song right here. Good effect it. More sense being in the song, dude. It's insane. So that's because, yeah, I really liked, it was a lot more of a, sh it felt, yeah, it felt a lot more, it was actually not that much shorter than Here Comes the Sun, but it felt a lot shorter, you know, it felt, it was more of a, you know, great uh, harmonies on that, it really felt like, yeah, it was a nice little part of the album uh, to get us from Here Comes the Sun to the medley that's about to come up. Okay, so... Alright, so... <sighs> so... From track 8 to... Well, track 17 is just... 25 seconds long, so really from because to the end, I'm sorry, from you never giving your money to the end, these are all one continuous song that are just split up into the different portions. So, 
we're not so what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to pause in between each song. I'm only gonna pause if I have something to say. But just because the song ended doesn't mean I'm gonna have to pause. But I do wanna pause just because the song ended and I wanna talk about the song. I'll go back like twenty seconds to get the transition and for it to flow like one song so hopefully that would it'll make sense because i'm treating it like it's one big song here so yeah so we're starting off the abbey road medley which you never give me your money which is by mccartney the fact he's Four minutes long, so it's like the main piece of the medley here because it's longer than pretty much every song, other than obviously I Want You She's So Heavy and Come Together. Um, so yeah, it's like the third longest song in the album, it's just the first part of one big song. So yeah, let's go. Track number. Nine, you never give me your money, beginning of the Abbey Road medley. I feel nervous to step into the medley. Let's go. You never give me your money. Ooh, starting with a piano. Nice. A lot more of a downer piano. You never give me your money. Paul's dude. Once again, I have to say the production, man, the mixing of production. How Paul's voice sounds so smooth over the instrumental. None are canceling each other out. So good, man. You never give me your money. Mm. You only give me your fun. So this is apparently a song. This was written by because of the Beatles financial struggles at the time um i guess between members you know some beef happening between financial situation and going on there The bass is so much louder in these songs. So it was part of making the, making the bass so much better. I think this album is just it's so much louder. You can hear it so much more. I only give you my situation. A lot more because I hear with the harmonies, like vocal layering. Big switch up there from the harmony, um, the vocal layering soft thing, and then it goes straight to, to his rock voice thing. Uh, you are a girl, you know, the, the voice he does. He's doing a comment, oh darling. 
So yeah, nice. I like that a lot. focusing a lot more on the sound of the album than an actual like what they're doing with the like the like the, specifically what they're doing with the writing or what specific style they're doing they're a lot more focused on just how the music sounds on this album which I think has made it potentially the best one they just really focus on how we're going to make this music sound. Ooh. Oh, good guitar, man. Ooh. There's been a lot of great guitar solos on this album, man. We don't really get guitar solos. It really didn't seem like got that many guitar solos from the Beatles that much, really. We got a lot of them on this album. They've all been great. <laughs> Paul's done like three different voices in this track. He's done the, the, the soft vocal layering. He's done this like Brock American accent thing. He does on this thing. And then he's going back to his like British heart a bit more, you know. Uh, not soft, yeah, get kind of in the middle singing voice where it's not like that heavy, but it's not that soft. So it says the the genius and the point of this song is kind of like about Beatles, you know, the negotiations kind of leading to their breakup and stuff. You know, it's talking about giving your money, and then it's, it talks about like verse three is a lot about their early days. You know. Um, Talk about and yeah, nowhere to go, and then it has a big instrumental break, and and he's talking about kills bags. It's just he's saying it's inevitable that it's time for the band to end, which is uh, you know poetic considering this is their last album. <laughs> I love the guitar in this song. It's the best part of this song is the guitar. I like the little, the little writing of just having the children's part at the end. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All good children go to heaven. What is this part of the instrumental here at the end? I don't even know it's... yeah. And this is gonna be transitioned to the next song here. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, we're on the second part, Sun King. Chill, We're building up some. A lot more of the harmonies, man. We've seen in the last three trade tricks, we have a lot more harmonies than we have in most of the Beatles songs ever. The sun in these albums seems to represent like optimism or goodness going ahead it seems in this one. Talking about uh, everybody's happy, everyone's smiling, everyone's happy on this song. And you know, here comes the sun being all about optimism and stuff. So it's interesting. I, I, I'd really like to see the deeper meaning. If there's any different meaning behind these, what the what the song is really talking about, on all all the song, songs in the medley. But yeah. It said that this part doesn't really mean anything. It's like a mismatch of Spanish and Portuguese that they like, does it. Yeah, I don't know what they're trying to do with this one. I don't know. <laughs> No idea what the hell that was meant to be. Whoa, okay, a big switch up between this song and this song it was the song king and me mr mustard but uh yeah i'm i'm very confused about that track with how they started talking like spanish slash portuguese at the end <laughs> And I don't, it, it said that, that, that it didn't really translate to anything. I don't, I'm super confused. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm really, it sounds really good, this entire thing, but it's just really confusing. What the hell, they're trying to say if anything on this but i like to switch up as soon as it gets to that it goes to you know more upbeat you know faster paced from the you know very slow paced stuff like that it's me sun king <laughs> This 
this is a lot more upbeat. I like the switch up. I like this more upbeat strong after the more uh, slower song. Pausing Pam. Check on the floor. Yeah. I like the drums in this song, dude. I don't know what to say about it, but it's cool. Ooh, here we go. That was a very direct criticism right there. So I get on to it. Oh, I like the build up that's happening right now. Okay, we're gonna run the track to the scene. She came into the bathroom window. I don't know, I don't know much to say about Paul Team Pam. I don't know. I liked Paul's vocal on that. Paul had a very good vocal on that. I like that. She came in through. I like that. As, as the beat dropped, I like that. I think McCartney's had the best part of this medley so far with Never Give Me Your Money and she came into the bathroom window right now. The song ends in silence, so it's going to be one song. Huh. I'm very confused. I'm a how. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this. So the medley seems to be a bunch of songs that were like. They like half had an idea for, but they just made him into one big idea, and it seems to have worked out. Uh, to better make these half songs into like full, um, just one big song. To see how it worked out, and I'm 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 not really seeing the full connection through all of them, which is why uh, I'm a bit confused. Um, okay, so we're not in the golden slumbers. It it was a it, I'm causing because this is uh. This one wasn't a good bit of a transit, and this one ended with silence, and he just goes to golden slumbers, starting off with a completely different instrumental with the piano here. Once there was a way. Carney seems to be the main one here in this medley to be dominating it. 
Okay, I love every time Paul McCartney does this deeper voice he's done this whole album and for the Beatles not his choreography, but specifically in this album every time he does it there's like a big bass. There's big a big uh beat drop every time he does that voice and it really makes it accentuates it a lot more. Ringo's going crazy with the drums on these beat drops every time. I like those harder vocals with that deeper voice over the piano beat. All the drums. This really feels like, okay, now, now with the more, like, uh, string instruments coming to come in is really starting to feel this really starts to feel like a, um this really starts to feel a lot more like a like a grand finale uh, the like the, I don't know string instruments for me feel like a lot more of a grand finale type thing and this is a fantastic thing to follow this for the grand, sounds sound like a grand finale for the Beatles title of the discography really, which I really like at the end here. Get back home. Is this some... Like this sounds like it's about the end credit music. Get back home. Sleep pretty. I will sing a lullaby. That was a that was a good transition. Play the transition again. That was a good transition. Play that shit. I love the build up. This one is just I like the the slower one. It feels like grand finale. All the string instruments that it ends, and it has such a good transition to that one. To this one, which is a lot more up beat, and it's like more of a chant. You know, it's about to hit the end here, literally, literally, and <laughs> literally the end um uh yeah I wanted to carry that way now by the way um and yeah this really feels like we're about to take a chance we're about to go into the finale and I like that even though it went from a 
slow tempo song to a more up tempo song. It still had a good transition. The transition worked perfectly, which is, you know, you wouldn't think of that transition would work between the slow tempo and high tempo song, but it actually did. <laughs> God, this is a good guitar solo. Oh my God. That's a good finale here. Ah, uh, okay, and then the reprise is You Never Give Me Your Money, back to the beginning of the medley. I like that, coming full circle, it's about to hit the end here. Oh my god, this is good. The, metal, the medley is getting better as it goes on. Okay, this is the best song in the medley, I think, so far. I really like Carry That Weight. Yeah, I really like how it seems like we're about to build up to a huge finale. Um, how it reprised You Never Give Me Your Money, had a great transition to it. And I love the all ch the chanting chorus. I love it. This is the best song in the medley so far. Oh shit! Here we go. It's time. The end. Oh, great transition to the guitar. Let's let's play that transition again. No. Okay, let's listen to Lynn's transition here. I love that transition. Final upbeat. Here we go. Grand finale. The end. The final Beatles song. Oh my god, this is crazy. Oh, drum solo. Let's go Ringo getting his shine on the last song. Oh my god! This is the only drum solo Ringo's ever had. Oh, that's so hype. That's so hype to have that drum solo in the final song. Oh my god, it's so hype. This is such a good finale. This is fantastic. All oh, the guitar solo is so good. So good. Go back. Go back. Like the police was up on this epic guitar solo. 
to the sweater thing. It's like the transition right here from I want you shoot so high ready. Here comes the sun. Very nice. Great final words. The great dude. Final lyrics in the Beatles discography, man. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Wow. The love they collected from everybody with the same intense love that they invested in the band's work is the last message of love. And you know, for the guy, yeah, that was really their whole message, the entire discography. It was a message of love the entire time. That's what the entire discography was a message of wow what a what an ending what an ending we gotta listen to this and in the end, I'm getting emotional this for this being the final lyric oh my god dude wow that's such a great last line, dude. Such a great last line. This is how you finish a career. A great word from the genius page. Oh, and it's giving me a long silence because I'm assuming, uh, so, that's the last song, but we do have one more little snippet here because we have the hidden track with Her Majesty. I'm assuming it's a hidden track because it's going to be, like, way more silent and then you had to keep your vinyl spinning. Um, your record spinning for like way more silence to hear this final song here than you would. So you would think the album's over and then you get the final hidden track here. Let's see, the, listen to this final hidden track. Her Majesty. Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. And that's the Wow. We have finished the album. Oh, I can't believe we finished the album. <laughs> that is it. That is Abbey Road by the Beatles. Whoa. All right get the final opinions 10 out of 10
This is a 10 out of 10 album. This was worth the wait. Worth the wait. Months of wait that you've been waiting for this reaction if you've been watching the other ones. <sighs> Best Beatles album. This has to be. I has to. I'm, I'm putting. I'm putting the foot down. This is the best Beatles album, and it's fantastic. Everything about it. The instrumentals were so good. The entire album. They were the MVP of the album. To have the ending of your entire discography. Not only the album, but your entire discography, your entire career, and with an epic med eight song medley that builds up to a grand finale and an and a really poetic, amazing final line. Is just fantastic after so many amazing hits in their entire discography and even on this album. So many great songs before that, so many hits before that come together. Something. Here comes the sun. There were so many good songs on this. And it all flowed together really well. I Want You She's So Heavy was fantastic. I loved that. So creative. And I loved the, you know, just having an epic 16 minute big song basically that you build up to end your, your career with. Um, what other artists have that pleasure of just being able to end their career kind of on their own terms, you know, obviously there was an album released after this, Let It Be, but you know, in terms of the final album recorded, you know, the Beatles ended on their own terms. Um, they knew, they kind of like knew this would be the last album, that's, I think that's why they called the last song the end, you know. And yeah, this is the 10 out of 10, this is the best Beatles album. Um, yeah, this is the best Beatles album I've heard, I've heard all this has to be the greatest finish to a career ever. It has to be. I mean, it has to be. I mean, it absolutely has to be. That was fantastic. Um, yeah. I have no other words. This is the best Beatles album so far. This is an amazing work of art. This should be, the, as the, I mean, it is already put in such high regards as one of the greatest pieces of art ever made. Um, of all, the, just so great. So much history made in this album. It's just so amazing. In the description below, if you like more music reactions, lyric reacts music, right. solo Beatles, solo Beatles albums, all things must pass. You know, by George Harrison, Imagine by John Lennon, Patagonia Band, Ram by Paul McCartney. Uh, and Wings albums. I'm gonna react to those on there. Those are gonna be the first album reactions they do on that channel. Um, and that. And in you're interested in the Lyric Reacts Media channel, 
that will be where I will be posting the get reaction to the get back documentary. Um, so I'm gonna react to the Beatles Get Back documentary in three parts. It's gonna be on the Lyric Reacts Media channel. Go subscribe to that. So, if you're interested in Beatles content, that's where it's gonna be from now on. Um, yeah. So... There you go, updates on my channel, and hope you guys enjoyed this long outro and this long, amazing build up to this finale here. Fantastic album, and that's the end of the Beatles' journey. Um, except for one more. We do have three songs left from the Anthology Theories and the one at least last year. So we are going to react to those tomorrow. But until then, that's it. End of the Beatles journey. The large reason why a lot of you, most of you, I would say, got to my channel. Um... But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the journey. Goodbye.